Hello everyone and welcome. I have a nice large deco mesh welcome home wreath for you today. In today's crafting adventure I'm going to show you step by step how to make this beautiful blue and white welcome wreath. The base is made using 10 inch mesh and three different methods. Let me show you how to make it. To get started on today's wreath you're going to need one of the 18 inch wreath forms that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some full length pipe cleaners. Now we're going to change this 18 inch wreath form into a working wreath form and all that means is that we're going to attach the pipe cleaners to the wreath form. Now normally when you see it listed like for sale and it says working wreath form that means it comes with pipe cleaners or uh, stems attached to it already. Now this wreath form only has three rings, but that's okay. The first one you're going to want to attach to the center bar and the outer bar. The second one you want to attach at the center bar and the inner bar. And then in between, the crossbars, you're also going to place one here on the center bar and the outer bar. Now you're just going to repeat this pattern as you move around the wreath form. By the time you're finished, you should have a total of 24 pipe cleaners attached. For your convenience, in the description box below is a detailed list of all the tools and materials used in today's project. This list will not only tell you how much you're going to need, it will also let you know where I purchased the materials. I have all of my pipe cleaners attached to my 18 inch wreath form. Now the reason why I chose an 18 inch wreath form is because of the size of my sign. Uh, this sign is 12 inches in diameter and if you set it down even with the wire wreath it just fits inside. So once you add the mesh this is going to sit right in the middle and as you can tell it's quite large and I want to make sure I have plenty of mesh around to add my ribbon and my other embellishments. But this is a really nice thick metal sign, perfect if you want to put your wreath outside. Let's prep our ribbon. I pulled out four different ribbons. All of them came from craftoutlet.com. While I'm showing you the ribbon, I will also insert a photo of the item number for you. We're going to start with this one. This is made by one of my favorite brands, Really Good Ribbon. Two and a half inches at 10 yards. It was $8.95. I love the floral print on that white background and I love the way they did the edging here on the ribbon. The colors match perfectly to the wreath. To accent this one, I pulled this out. This is one and a half inches at 10 yards by Expressions. And this one was $4.50. This is a velvet type ribbon. I think it's beautiful and it's going to look gorgeous accenting that ribbon very pretty. And then I also pulled this out. Now I've had this in my stash for quite some time. I did pick this up from Craft Outlet but it was a while ago and this is two and a half inches at 10 yards and it's a little sheer. It's very pretty. It has all the different shades of blue and some white stripes there and to accent this ribbon I have the one and a half inch Royal Canvas White Ribbon. This is by Really Good Ribbon. I love that brand. I also really like this specific uh, ribbon, the Royal Canvas. It's flat and it's really nice. It holds its shape. Really good ribbon to work with. So those two are going to go together for one bundle and these two are going to go together for the other bundle. Now you need to cut 12 pieces of each ribbon at 12 inches and dovetail the ends. I wanted to show you a trick I've started to do for cutting my ribbon since I got my new scissors because these can actually cut. Uh, I go ahead and measure my ribbon at 12 inches and then I fold it at 12, measure it out 
and then I just start folding it over. So that's two, three, and I keep going until I have the number of ribbon that I need. Then you just want to find the center where you started to fold everything. Look at that. Cut right through all of that ribbon. I love these scissors. I love them, love them. Talk about reducing time for me for cutting ribbon for, for my wreaths. There you go. That's how quick it is to cut 12, 12 inch ribbon. I have my ribbon cut 12 pieces at 12 inches and they're all dovetailed. Now to get them ready uh, to assemble, I like to stack them how I'm going to put them together. So these two are going together and then these two are going together. That way I just need to grab them as I go. If you're enjoying today's content, make sure to subscribe. We're going to be using 10 inch deco mesh today. First up is this jute colored deco mesh. This one I did pick up from Hobby Lobby, 10 inches at 10 yards. And then some white deco mesh. This one I picked up from Craft Outlet, but you can pick it up from Hobby Lobby wherever you need to, 10 inches at 10 yards. I'll let you know at the end exactly how much of each roll you're going to need. We're going to start to attach our deco mesh to our wreath base. And we're going to start with the jute color. You want to take the end and scrunch it together. I like to start on the inner ring, but if you want to start on the outer ring, you can. I'm going to place it here and tighten it down, give it a couple twists. You want to make sure that's nice and secure. We don't want that to come loose. And we're going to be measuring our poofs at 10 inches. You want to start here where you attached it. Measure it out to 10 inches and pinch. Then you go to the next pipe cleaner on the inner ring. Place it in, give it a good twist. Now you want to continue to do this all the way around the center ring. I'm back where I started. So now I'm going to move to the outer ring and all you need to do is just drop down to the pipe cleaner that's directly below. Get it attached and then continue around the outside measuring your poofs at 10 inches. Once you have your mesh attached, you want to go back and open up each of your poofs. I'm prepping the rest of my mesh with the rest of the roll and some of a new roll. You need to cut 24 pieces at 10 inches. And then with your white roll of mesh, you need to cut 24 pieces at 15 inches. You should be able to get that out of one roll. I like to use a rotary cutter. This one I picked up from Dollar Tree. But if you have a nice sharp pair of scissors, you can use that as well. Now to make my bundles, I like to use my Bow Dabra. This helps me a lot. I have arthritis in my hands. And especially when working with 10 inch mesh, um, it tends to be a little bit more difficult to hold on to. So this comes in handy. If you don't have a bow maker, you can either hold it in your hands if you have good hands, or you can use one of the pink clips that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. Okay, so I have my mesh ready to go. My ribbon's ready to go. 
So we're going to start with the white mesh and you want to turn it so that it curls down. Now with this we're going to be doing your standard ruffle. Now the trick with the standard ruffle is at both ends you want to slightly fold that end under. Now this mesh is quite stiff and it folds under really nicely. Then once you've done that start in the center and gather as you go across. Do your best to stay in the center. Once you get to the other side you want to take that end and fold it under. Then either place it in your clip, hold on to it, or in your bow maker. So both ends that are cut should be curled under. I think that looks really pretty. It almost looks like a little butterfly. And then we're going to top that with a curl. Now you just want to allow it to do a nice large curl. It should go around uh, at least two times. You don't want the ends to stick out. If the ends are sticking out, your curl is too tight. Go back and loosen it up. The reason why you don't want those ends to stick out is because it will cause more fraying. Then you want to place your seam side down. And then we're going to add our ribbon. This one, we're going to do these two. And I like to crisscross them here in the bow maker. It just seems to be easier to keep them separated once I get it onto my wreath. So that's going to be our first bundle. I'm starting to attach my bundles. I like to attach my bundles on the center first and then I move to the outside. And we're just going to be alternating between the two. Now when you're placing your bundles, you want to place them this way, not this way. So you want the curl part to go side to side. Now the reasoning for this is you want to keep the majority of your mesh around the ring. If you do it the other way, you'll end up with a lot of mesh in the center and you're not even going to see that because you're going to put your sign there. And then you're not going to have enough mesh around the edge to make it look nice, thick, and full. Twist it down a couple extra times, trim it, and then push that down. And then I always like to kind of lift up my ribbon. I like to crisscross them and pull them towards the outside. And then with my mesh, I kind of like to bring it up so that it's resting against itself. That helps lift it up and give it some more height. I'll do my final adjusting with my ribbon once I get my sign on because you're going to have to readjust it at that time anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our next bundle. So we're going to do the same base. Put the curl side down. Fold the end over just like half an inch. Scrunch down the center. When you get to the other side, make sure to fold that side under. Very pretty. And then top it off with a curl. And then these two ribbons. And that's what your second bundle looks like. all of my bundles and my ribbon in and I'm so happy. The base is absolutely gorgeous, nice, thick, and full. So pretty. 
Now this is the sign we're going to be using today. I picked this up from craftoutlet.com. I really do like that site. This sign is rather large. That's why I used an 18 inch. It's 12 inches in diameter. And it does come with two holes. It's a nice thick metal sign. So I went ahead and added some floral wire. Now I use the floral wire that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. I prefer the silver because that tends to blend into pretty much everything. You just want to leave it long enough so that you can attach it to your wreath. And I go through the hole and over the top and then twist it in the back and just leave two pieces so it's easy for you to attach. Now I'm going to place my sign right up on top in the center and when I attach it, since the hole is at the top and the bottom, I want to make sure that I attach it to crossbars. That way I will make sure that I have it in the center and I don't want to pull it down real tight because I do want it to sit up on top. So you just take your floral wire. You separate your mesh until you can get down to that metal frame in the back. And then you feed your floral wire there and tie it on. My sign is on. I went around and fluffed out my ribbon around the sign, pulled it out so you can see it. So I'm really happy with that. We're going to make the bow now. I'm going to be using the exact same ribbon that I used inside the wreath. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut one piece of each ribbon at 20 inches and dovetail the ends. This is going to be all of our tails. I want all of the tails on this bow to be in the back, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Now to start our bow, I'm going to use the striped. This is what I want in the background. I've cut two pieces at 20 inches. Bring the ends together. Cover them by about an inch and a half. You want to push down till you find the center. Flip it over so that the cut sides in the back. Scrunch and place that in the center. You want to do the same thing with both pieces. Now I have two pieces of the really pretty flower ribbon. These are cut at 16 inches and I'm going to do the same thing. Fold them over themselves, find the center, I have two pieces of the pretty velvet navy. These are also cut at 16 inches. I'm going to add these. Actually, before I do that, I have two pieces of ribbon that I had left over. I guess I miscounted. I'm going to stick these in here. Be some extra tails. I'll probably trim them a little bit. I think this is a good spot. I have two pieces of the white ribbon. These are cut at 15 inches and now I'm going to add these. Take a full length pipe cleaner, lift up, slide it in underneath all that ribbon. Pull it up when you get right next to your pipe cleaners. I always like to pull it together and then you want to push all that ribbon down so you get it nice and snug and then pinch and lift out. Now that will keep your ribbon all stacked properly. Make sure you get in the center. Kind of pull that to the back. You want your mess in the back. 
Okay, so make sure you get that nice and tight. You want to keep that stacked properly. And then give a good twist or two in the back. Make sure it's good and secure. Okay, then just go in, open up your loops. If you need to do any adjusting, do your adjusting. Just be careful not to pull too hard. And if it feels like it's getting loose, tighten it down. So you want to pull all your tails down. Open up your loops. Now see, I'm trying to do kind of like a cluster, almost like a flower look here with my ribbon. So I'm standing up the smaller ribbon and then trying to fan out the larger ribbon around it to have all my tails pulled down. Now I'll do my final adjusting and I'll decide exactly how long I want each of my tails once I get it onto my wreath. I have my bow attached. I think it is so pretty. Now I kind of fanned out my tails so I have some pulled to this side and the others pulled to this side and then again if you need to adjust those ribbons once you put it in go ahead and do that and I did leave the two and a half inch ribbon nice and long but I went back in and trimmed the one and a half inch both the navy and the white a little shorter because I kind of like that where they cascade down the tails I think that looks really pretty and I love the placement on the sign that they actually give you the space there to put your bow and I think that's absolutely beautiful but we're not quite done yet now I want to be adding some florals both of these I picked up from Walmart uh, anemone a-n-e-m-o-n-e I think those are very pretty and they look just like the flowers on the sign, same color tones. These were $1.32. I picked up two stems of those. And then this is one of their fabulous $3.98 bouquets. And I found it with this beautiful white rose. And it also has this little bit of what I'm assuming is supposed to be baby's breath with it. But I think that's gorgeous. Now, I don't think I'm going to be using all of these, but I definitely want to trim them down. And depending on where I'm going to put them depends on how far I want them to stick out. So for right now, I'm going to leave the stem rather long until I decide exactly where I want to put them. And then same thing with this, kind of push everything up towards the top. I can always cut the stems a little shorter if I need to. So I'm working on getting my florals placed and I'm just kind of feeding them in, figuring out how long I need the stem. Once I've decided where I want to place it, I'm just adding some hot glue around the stem. And then when you place it, you just need to make sure that you get good contact with the mesh. And you don't want your floral too far down in the mesh. You want it to sit up on top so that you can see it. I have all my embellishments in and I'm so pleased with the end result. It is absolutely gorgeous. What a great way to welcome your guests to your home. I had a lot of fun putting this wreath together. I actually designed this wreath specifically for a friend. I'm going to be giving it to her as a gift. Do you think she's going to like it? Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. If you enjoy craft tutorials and hauls, you're going to want to check out these other videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you're going to want to. I always have great content coming at you every week. 
Have a great day. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.